going to be making a homemade pizza today. Then what we're going to do is to make our own homemade pizza base. Really nice because it just makes it nice and fresh. And then what we're going to use is a bit of mozzarella, a bit of parmesan, and you know, just sort of put some really nice toppings on it. And it's going to be absolutely delicious. So before we get on and make this pizza, I just want to first of all go through the ingredients we're going to use. First of all, I've got some strong white bread flour, and I've got 300 grams of that. Then I've got some water. Now this is warm water. It came out of the kettles, cooled down slightly, 200 ml of warm water. Now make sure it's warm because you need to activate the yeast and, you know, slightly dissolve the actual salt and sugar. Now I've also got me yeast there. Now I've got one teaspoon and then we've got some salt and sugar, the same amount, one teaspoon. Also some olive oil. Now keeping it in sort of teaspoon measurements, three teaspoons of olive oil. So all that lot is gonna make up the dough, which is gonna make up your pizza base. So that's all there. The next thing, we're gonna go through the ingredients for making the actual tomato sauce that we're gonna spread on this beautiful homemade pizza base. Now to make the homemade tomato sauce, I've got some passata. Passata is like, if you imagine like a can of tomatoes and it's all blended down so it's really nice and fine, that's what it is in a jar. Now I'm actually going to be using 100 ml. This whole jar is about 600-700 ml, so I'm going to use 100 ml of passata. Now I've got one clove of garlic. If you're not keen on garlic, just use half of one. Now what we need to do is to crush it down so it's nice and fine and mix that in the tomato sauce. I've also got like a big handful of basil, so most of that we're actually going to put in the tomato sauce and spread it out on the pizza. Keep a little bit of basil leaves just at the end to make it look really nice. So we've gone through the ingredients for making the pizza base, the homemade tomato sauce. The final thing is the ingredients for the toppings. Now with the toppings, you can use any toppings you like. Now first of all, I've got some mozzarella. You can use grated mozzarella. Now these ones are like balls of mozzarella and they're in a liquid. So what you need to do is open it up, tip all the liquid away, slice down the actual balls of mozzarella, lay it on your pizza. Now, I've got some tomatoes, cut some of those in half, put those on, but try and get nice tomatoes, ones that when you eat them, you think, oh, that's delicious. Then we've got some black olives, just sort of finish it off, makes it look really nice. And finally, I've got a bit of parmesan, so I'm just gonna grate some parmesan, put that in the oven. When it all comes out, just keep a few of these sort of basil leaves, just to sort of dress it up, give it a bit of color, absolutely delicious. So I've gone through the ingredients, so what I'm going to do is clear the decks and we're actually going to get on with making the pizza base and the tomato sauce. So we're going to make up the pizza base. Now first of all, I've got myself a bowl and I'm going to drop in the strong white bread flour. And we've got 300 grams of that. That's a good idea just to make a little well in the middle so that we can put the rest of the stuff and the water. So I'm just going to add like one teaspoon of instant yeast. And then again, we've got one teaspoon, same amount of salt, and then one teaspoon of just any sugar, really. So, same amount of each of those. Then I've got 200 ml of warm water. Remember, make sure it's warm. Then we've got some olive oil. Now, again, it's roughly three teaspoons. I'm not going to measure it out too exact. One, two, three. That'll do. Now, what I'm going to do is to mix it all up. I'm going to use a wooden spoon, so just kind of, you know, bring it all together, give it a good mix, and it should come out as a fairly sort of wettish kind of dough. So, I'm just going to get it into a ball, and then I'm going to dust off the floured surface so we can kind of knead it up and get it all ready. We're just going to pick up a ball of dough. It's kind of sticky at the moment, but we're just going to, you know, turn it around get a little bit of flour on the outside. You use plenty of flour because you don't want to get into a mess. Now we're going to knead the dough, which is really a way of mixing up all the ingredients. So I'm just going to sort of fold it round, turn it as you do it, stretch it, and then just keep doing it like so really. Use the sort of palm here to sort of press it down. And each time you do, just bring it back on itself. And just do that for about five minutes. Now I reckon mine's just about done really. Now what I'm going to do is just move that out of the way and I'm going to put a bowl there, same bowls I use but I just cleaned it out. 
Now you can either put olive oil at the bottom to make sure it doesn't stick or you can dust it off with flour. I'm going to use some flour. There we go. And I'm going to put a little cloth over there. Once we've got a cloth on it, what we need to do is to put it just somewhere a little bit warm so it rises slightly. Now I'm going to use a couple of sort of tea towels and I'm going to put it into somewhere warm. Now what I've done is I've just switched the oven on just to warm it up very slightly and obviously make sure you switch the oven off but I'm going to pop mine into the oven leave this for about half an hour you can leave it for longer if you want you know the longer you leave it a couple of hours it will really kind of grow but I'm going to leave mine for about half an hour so I'm just going to put mine in the oven make sure you turn the oven off and it's only a little bit warm now whilst we're waiting for the pizza dough to kind of rise up a little bit what I'm going to do is get myself a bowl and we're just going to get on with this sort of homemade tomato sauce. Now first of all, I've got that sort of fresh basil. Now I'm actually gonna pull all the leaves off there. I'm gonna keep some aside just to dress it up at the end, but all the rest of them are gonna go in this little sort of dish. Now with the basil, I've just got a big clump of it there. I've kind of squashed it together. You can just chop that out with a pair of scissors really, just to make it a little bit finer. So we put that in the bowl. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to sort of use some crushed up garlic. If you can't crush it, then really you want to chop it down as fine as you possibly can. Now I've got my clove of garlic there. Now I'm actually going to use one of these sort of crushers. They're very cheap machines and I find them very useful. You just sort of squash them like so. And you just trim it off with a knife. Now there will be a little bit of garlic in there. You can kind of just chop that up and add that in as well if you want. Now I've got the passata. We've got 100 mil of that. So literally just pour it all in, give that a stir up, and that is really your actual tomato base. So it's very, very easy to do that. So I'll just put that aside now, and I'll just wait until my pizza dough has slightly risen, which takes about half an hour, and then we're gonna pull it out, and we're gonna just sort of flan it out on this sort of, you know, floured surface. Right, let's pull that tablecloth. Look at that, that's risen really nice. Now obviously if you keep it in there for longer, it will rise more. I'm now gonna take that out, dust off the surface with some flour, and what we're gonna do is cut it in half, and then I'm gonna roll it out so we've got the pizza base for two pizzas. I'm just gonna move that bowl out of the way a minute, and I'm gonna get some flour, and I'm just gonna dust off the surface. Because again, I don't want it sticking. So let's just tip that out of the bowl. Look at that. Nice and light. Now I'm going to cut it in half and then I'm going to roll out two pizza bases. Let's just get a knife and chop that in half. So there we go. There's one and here's the, here's the other. So I'm just going to roll out one of those and then we'll do the second one. Now again, even your rolling pin, just put a little bit of flour on there and just roll that out really I mean you know if you're wanting to sort of do it with your hands you can do that and sort of stretch it but I just find it nice and quick sometimes to just do it with a rolling pin nice and easy so I've got that all rolled out now what I'm going to do is do the same with the other piece of dough but I'm going to put this one onto a baking tray so I'm going to get a baking tray put a little sliver thin sliver of olive oil and then just lay this on the baking tray and that is ready then to put this sort of homemade tomato sauce on so let's get a baking tray put the oil and lay this on top now what we're going to do now is to actually put the oven on because we want a nice preheated oven now I'm going to get on with putting on that tomato sauce so with the tomato sauce got it there all mixed up just put some all around around make sure you've got enough for both and then we can just spread that out you only need a thin layer you don't need loads and loads of this this is just to give it a base so I'm just going to spread that out just sort of rub it round back end of a spoon whatever you've got really that do and I'll do the same for the second one so there we go done the second one so we've got the nice base on there now what we're next going to do is to you know put the mozzarella cheese now I've got balls of mozzarella so I'm going to move one of the trays 
just to show you what we do with the mozzarella balls. But if you've got grated cheese, just sprinkle it on top, simple as that. Right, I've got the mozzarella balls and I couldn't really pull it open, so what I'm gonna do is just slice me way in. Now, I just wanted to really show you. See, we've got like a liquid there. It's like a giant egg almost. So what we wanna do is to tip all that away, just get rid of that down the drain or whatever, and then come back with the ball, put it on a little chopping board, and we're just gonna slice it down and then dress it over this pizza. So there you go, drained it all off. So what we can then do is just really slice it down. It doesn't have to be in thick lumps. And just do that. And then we can just add it on to the two pizzas. Now obviously if you felt, oh there wasn't enough cheese, you can always add some other cheese, you know, a bit of sort of grated mozzarella if you got it, or you can do cheddar cheese just to sort of fill it out. Do it to your own taste, that's what it's about. So I'm just going to grab some of mine and just really kind of spread it out. I think I could have done with just a little bit more cheese than this one, but what I'll do is on the other one, I'll add, I've got some grated mozzarella, so I'll just add a little bit of that. But there you go, that's enough for that pizza. Now I'll just bring back the other pizza there. And obviously I've got a little bit of mozzarella cheese there. Not as much as I'd like, but that's a start. So it's quite handy, but I've got some grated mozzarella there as well. So I'm just going to sprinkle that. You know, do all this sort of stuff to taste, really. There you go. A little bit of cheese on there. You can put more if you like. Then we've got a whole load of tomatoes, so I've got more, but what I'm going to do is chop them all down in half. Might leave a few of them whole. Next thing is, I've got those olives, so I'm just going to pop some of the black olives, gives it a nice sort of colour contrast, looks good. So I've got me two pizzas and they're pretty much prepared. We've got our sort of homemade tomato sauce, we've got the tomatoes, the cheese, the black olives. It's all on there. Now what I'm going to do next is just give them a sprinkle with some olive oil. Now I'm not going to put a lot. Do try if you can, just to get a little sprinkle. It sounds like a lot I'm putting on because of shaking in the bottle, but it's not really. It's just some little drops. Now the other thing is, you can put things like oregano on there. I've got some dried oregano. I might just put a little bit on both of them because I do actually like a bit of oregano. Now the other thing you can add, you know, is whatever you've got in the sort of fridge and that. Now I happen to have some parmesan. Really nice, like ham serrano. Really nice ham. So what we can do is just put a little bit out and just put some flickers. You haven't got to put much, it's quite expensive, but it's really nice. Now the last thing I'm going to put in, I've got some parmesan. You don't have to use that, but I really like it. And I think it's great on pizzas. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on there. Just makes a really nice flavour. And again, same with this one. Do it all to taste. I mean, the thing about a pizza, it's all about you making it for you and how you want it. So there we go, that's all ready now. So I've got the two pizzas and all ready to go and they look absolutely scrummy yummy and they haven't even been cooked yet. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them into the oven. Remember it's a preheated oven, 220 degrees Celsius, 425 Fahrenheit, gas mark seven. Now what you wanna do is cook these for about 10 minutes, but keep an eye on them and make sure they don't burn. So I've cooked my pizza or pizzas for about 10 minutes. So let's put them out, have a look at that. Look beautiful. Let's just pull that. Absolutely scrummy. So I'm just gonna put that on the table. I'm just gonna sprinkle on just a little bit of fresh basil, all ready to serve up. I'm gonna serve mine up, a little bit of salad. Just gonna try a little bit of that salad. Mm. Real nice. In fact, I think I'm going to pick the pizza up with my hand. I'll just show you that. It looks absolutely delicious. I'm going to try some now. Mm. Oh. That is much, much better than any shop bought one. It's so simple to do. Add your own toppings. Really nice, delicious flavours, and that pizza base, it's just yummy. 
Thanks for watching. As always, the original Naked Chef.